situation where you find that they look like the same. Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional. Welcome back to Daybreak on Trust TV. And right now we'll take a look at the front pages of the National Dailies. And as usual, we'll start with the Daily Trust newspaper there. The major story here says, Appeal Court sacks Zamfara Governor and orders rerun in three local government areas. Kano, Bauchi, Governors, no fate today. Panic foodstuffs buying in Kano over fear of violence. And police won against wild jubilation in Bauchi. You'll find all these stories on page four. Below the headman that says 613 families of deceased police officers get 2.2 billion naira. By Yelsa, Imo, Kogi polls, vote buying, intimidation, disturbing, according to the peace committee. Bandits kill mother and newborn and others in Sokoto. Uh, we have dollar hits 1,105 at the official market. Guardian egg vendor defiles nine-year-old orphan in Kano. Sad situation there. You find this on page 16. The strike in Portis incurred 90,000 daily demorage of cargoes. And uh, there is a pictorial of a pro-Palestinian rally in Pristina, Kosovo, in November 16, 2023. And these are some of the stories on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. We'll now go to the Punch newspaper, starting at the top of the page. Forex, FG blames low export earnings, plans diversification. Besides that, banks' USSD debt to telcos hit $200 billion. Interesting, Cut that story on page 32. Senate summons service chiefs, demands security rejig. That story is on page 8. And, of course, we see... The lead story there, which says, be patient. Inherited crisis won't disappear overnight. That's according to the NSA, no rebound. That story is on page two. Of course, there are a couple of other writers there, which says, NSA appeals to Nigerians. It says, terrible inherited poor economy, insecurity. Also, exposed deficit inherited from Buhari, be transparent, will be challenges the federal government. See a picture out there, the picture of the David States, Guinea-Bissau at 50, Tinubu pledges support for West Africa's democracy. Also below, below that, we see Police Service Commission, NPF, considers 65 years as police retirement age. Our story is on page 27. Also, 80-year-old woman dies in Lagos building collapse. Unfortunate situation there. That story is on page 5. Finally, on the Punch newspaper. Oshu Assembly suspends Chief Judge at Deleke appoints replacement. I want to know why? Well, you could reach page 42 of the Punch newspaper to get more details. And that's it for the Punch newspaper. Rebado, government winning battle against oil theft in banditry. The oil production has risen to 1.7 BPD and Senate invites service chiefs for briefing. Now, this is the major story on the Nation newspaper this morning. Appeal court declares them for a poll inconclusive a judgment today uh, in Colonel Poll. Uh, below the mass, we have academics, senior lawyers snubbed in Supreme Court justices' nomination. Uh, there is a 31 ex co members pass confidence vote in Akere Dolu, and two commissioners abstain, return to occurring now. Group tells the governor. Uh, below the belt that says old ways on display during off-season polls, says Abdul Salami panel. Uh, at the top of the page that says federal governments can't rely on loans to fund 2024 budget. That's according to the minister. Adeleke suspends CJ despite court orders. Uh, dramas ensuing also in Oshun State there you'll find on page 5. 2023 polls, why INEC experienced internal sabotage. Sultan hails marking day for building mocks in Ibadan. Now, these are some of the stories that you can find in the nation's newspaper. And to the Guardian newspaper, we see the big story from recreation to chronic diseases, poverty. How sachet alcoholic drinks breed alcoholism. Toward national development, we see 
a pictorial there which carries some statistics of alcohol consumption per capita around the world. Beside that, we see service shutdown imminent as USSD debts hit 200 billion naira. That's on the business page on page 20. Below that, two commissioners abstain as Undo Exco's passes vote of confidence on Akira Dulu. Our story is on page 28. MTEF slash FSP, Nigeria can't rely on borrowing, must raise revenues to fund 2024 budget, says Edun. Our story is on page 3. Insecurity, Buhari handed tough period to Tunubu Ribado laments. Page 6, that story. Also, FJSC nominates 22 justices for elevation to the Supreme Court. Page 6. On the belt, we see appeal court sacks Zamfara governor, orders rerun in three local government areas. That story is on page 3 of the Guardian newspaper. These are some of the stories scattered on the front page of the Guardian newspaper for today. And on the Tribune, on Nigerian Tribune here, the top story says governorship election, anxiety in Keno, Plateau as court orders rerun in Zamfara and uh, three local governments affected. You find this on page eight uh, below the mask there. It says splinter group emerges in Edo PDP. Insecurity returns or reps turn back representatives insist service chiefs must appear. Oshun governor suspends CG and appoints a Folabi to act. Uh, you find this sorry on page 10 uh, from the top of the page there. It says why we why we are against borrowing to finance the 2024 budget. That's according to the finance minister. Southeast, North Central get three new Supreme Court justices each as FGSC nominates ex CJN sons and train to one others for elevation. You find this on page 10, 322 bodies not discovered in grave sites in Anambra Truth uh, Commissioner. Okay, that's the commissioner saying uh, that's the truth. Well, you find this on page 26, 80 year old woman dies in Lagos building collapse. 60 year old retired banker makes first class and wins eight awards at UI convocation. We have Sultan commence marking day on new Adoba Central marks built by Oyo Governor. You find this on page 13. Insecurity, we inherited tough period, says Ribado at Editor's Conference. You find this on page 12. These are some of the stories on the Nigerian Tribune today. And joining us this morning to review the national dailies we have in the studio, is Akende Amodu. He is the planning editor here at Trust TV and also our in-house analyst. Welcome to the program, Mr. Kendi. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, uh, but before we start with the newspaper review, we have Idris Jabrin standing by via telephone from uh, Kanu State to give us some updates on the situations over at his end. Good morning, Idris. Welcome to the program. Earlier, we tried connecting with you, but it seemed like we had, you know, some issues get hearing you properly. So, however, uh, what's the situation in Kanu this morning? All right, uh, it, it seems we have to wait a bit for Idris to connect with us. All right, let's come back to the studio, uh, Mr. Kende. Uh, let's start on what's happening about the appeal court, Saikin Zamfara, uh, state governor, and all there's a rerun in three local governments. I mean, considering that we saw how uh, the previous judgments happened in Plateau and also uh, ha happening in Kano, which we are expecting appeal to make a final uh, judgment on what is going on in Kano, how... What is your take on this? Well, um, we're still going through the process of um, the courts. Um, I'm sure that after the appeal court now, uh, this matter will also still go to the Supreme Court. Um, the questions to ask is, um, what are the bases on which the judgments were made? And how do we go forward from here? Um, Right now, we've had a, a governor that has spent barely, uh, um, from June to barely five months in office. So he hasn't really settled down because the hammer of the courts has been hanging over him. And so uh, now he has to also now go to reruns, which means uh, governance, governance in Zamfara State 
will be again delayed because the, the, that distraction will be there and what he needs to do or what he wants to do now is to reclaim or revalidate his mandate. So it's, you know, um, it's not a good time for Zamfara State. Um, and it's unfortunate that this has been the kind of topsy-turvy journey that that state has had. Exactly. Uh, because, Mr. Well, Kenji, I was going to ask you, doesn't this add to the already toxic political climate that we have in the state? I mean, the predecessor of Bello Matawali, that is um, Abdulaziz Yari, isn't exactly out of the picture yet. And we know, you know, the issues that ensue and that, that, is, that currently exist between um, Abdulaziz Yari and also Bello Matawali. Now, going further to see the issues that has also crop up uh, following the, 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 uh, the victory of PDP's Dauda Lawal, who is the current governor of the state, doesn't this you know, increase the level of crisis that we've seen in the state in the past years? The point is that there are too many power brokers in, in Zamfara state. So too many people that have refused to step out of the picture. Um, uh, government is supposed to be a continuum, but it doesn't mean that the former governors should stay in the picture and make governance difficult for the present governor. And then you have that security situation in the state, which is also fueled by too many power brokers in the state. And definitely this is not in the interest of the people. This is just in the interest of the power brokers and uh, their followers. And many of the followers don't even realize that it is impacting negatively on they themselves. Hmm. Okay, so... so uh, you know, quickly, I want, I want to ask, uh, do you think the people of Zamfara, with the fear of the, uh, you know, uh, insecurity going on, would even have uh, that faith of coming out to say, I want to come out again and vote? Uh, with this current situation, it's been back and forth of um, bandits taking over farms, uh, kidnapping students. Do you think they still have faith and won't have fear, just like the situation that happened in Imo, where people got scared and did not show up? Exactly. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, see, I see a situation in which there will be low voter turnout uh, because there will be that apathy. Um, you are asking people. Luckily, it's, not, it's just three um, local, local government areas. But even at that, um, do we have enough in those three local government areas? Because you have to now do the political calculations. Do you have in enough people in those three local government areas to uh, overturn the victory of the governor? You understand? Mm -hmm. Or um, will things just remain as usual? Then, key question, where is the people's will? in all of this mm. that's that's a good question to ask and i hope that the right quarters will be able to respond to that question but let's move further insecurity buhari handed 12th period to tunubu ribadu lament mr kenny what is this with the national security advisor speaking on behalf of the president talking about economic issues when his beat is supposed to be security why has he been vocal instead of allowing the spokesman of the president to do the talking? Well, um, you have to understand government. This is a very tough period for the government. There are some policies that have been introduced that have impacted negatively on the people. So everybody wants to be seen as being hands on deck to solve the problem. And then one of those things, one of the signs or the symptoms or the evidences of hands on deck is that they must defend the regime uh, where everything has gone awry. Uh, don't uh, forget that he's also speaking on security. And, you know, he's, in the, right, he's the right person to speak about um, the insecurity that was, unquote, inherited. Um, we did a report some um, barely two weeks ago on the state of kidnappings and how they have increased between May 29 
and the present day. And um, the figures are staggering. The, the amount of money that has been demanded and collected by um, a kidnappers is staggering, is in trillions, you understand. And the, amount, the number of incidents, you understand, between just June, uh, just June and uh, the present, is almost equaling the amount of security is incidents between um, um, May 2022 and May 2023. Wow. So um, it's, 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 um, it's not a funny situation. Hmm. And you hear it in the news. As news makers, uh, as news gatherers, those incidents are on our screens on a day-to-day -day basis. People are being kidnapped. Ransoms are being paid. People are saying that, you know, the reason for the increase in insecurity is because new governors came in. And the security uh, infrastructure that um, existed before the new governors came in, they didn't continue with it. Which means now, you understand, they are negotiating with uh, the kidnappers instead of going against them and trying to bring them down. So there are a lot of um, dysfunctions. There is always that fear of um, like not continuing what a former administration is doing. And at the end of the day, the people are the ones suffering it. But then, uh, Mr. Kenny, talking about uh, this, I mean, this government, since it came, we've seen a lot of people trying to make um, a, a decision or defend the, the administration, saying, okay, we are just starting, we inherited it from way back. But Nigerians are holding these people accountable of their campaign promises, which one of it was the president saying, do not pity me. So right now, it's like, you know, it's not really given, and people are losing faith in, in what the administration is representing, saying, one minute saying, yes, we know, but we promised good, and right now they keep blaming the passage. It's like we're stuck in, a, in one place. No, but they, they can't really afford to br blame the past. So you, you, you won't see, I think this is about the first time that um, a government official is coming and saying, categorically, we inherited a bad security situation and a bad economy. But isn't this an indictment on the previous administration? Yes, it is. You understand. But why so? I thought the previous administration was an APC administration. Oh, the same party. And what they do is they try to, they try to cover but, their but lapses. Yes, they try to cover their lapses, but it's not going away. This is seeming like then, a, and nobody a, is being a typical my hand no day situation. I wasn't the cause of the problem, so I will not take responsibility of the problem. But Mr. Kenny, isn't this seeming like the president and this current administration are trying to uh, stay away some, somewhat or shy away from some of the lapses that uh, you know, the previous administration recorded? I mean, we saw it the very first day that President Bola Metunubu was, was sworn in because he said it emphatically and categorically. Subsidy is gone. Even though he wasn't the one who removed the subsidy, it was looking like he wanted... Nigerians to be aware that, look, I wasn't responsible for this issue, even though it's gone. So don't come back blaming me for doing this. And we now see this same situation, the NSA saying, these people put us in a bad situation and we are struggling. The Minister of Finance says, we can't continue borrowing to fund Nigeria's budget. So it's looking like it is bad up and it's also bad down. What is now the situation for ordinary Nigerians? No, you, you know, when government normally comes in, um, what they meet on ground is not what they expected they would meet. Okay, so they get sort of a root shock. So it's or a they get to see the, re the reality. Uh, oh, oh, is it this so, bad? So <laughs> you understand? Okay. You know, uh, um, um, to be fair to President Buhari, when, when he came into government, it was the same thing. Okay, just mm, to copy right. short, Mr. Yes, Kenny. Indeed. So this aside from the Court of Appeal, which is supposed to deliver judgment. Um, on the Kanu uh, governorship election. Um, you know, the governor, Governor Abba Yusuf, had appealed to the appellate court to seek an appeal of his judgment. Indeed. I've used appeal three times. <laughs> you know, <laughs> of the judgment of the governorship election petitions tribunal. Uh, subsequently, perhaps in um, 
our news bulletins, we would connect with Shafiu Suleiman, who will be giving us updates mm. on the situation at, at the court. But then again, back to you, Mr. Kenny. Okay. So, as I was saying, so when you get into government, all those theories that you are making, when you are outside government, mm. you now have to deal with the reality. The, the same thing happened to Buhari when he came into government. Lofty promises. He found out that he didn't have any money to spend. We are right back uh, 360 degrees here right now. The president, you know, that is why when people are blaming him then that it took so long to appoint his ministers, <laughs> they didn't know what he was struggling with. He didn't, have, he didn't even have funds to pay his ministers. So, Mr. Kenny, isn't this sort of making a bad situation worse? I mean, and isn't it going to be even more difficult for this administration to prove to Nigerians that the situation is as bad as it is when you have situations where you have around 48 ministers currently serving in this current administration? Secondly, you have issues like the procurement of 360 vehicles for members of the House of Representatives at around 160 million naira each. Do this narrative doesn't serve the second narrative that they are trying to push out to Nigerians, that Nigeria is currently broke. So how do they intend to navigate, you know, all of this? Exactly what uh, Peter will be saying, if you... If you of course, of course. If, he if said they should listen, mention the figures. If you, if you listen to him in the last few days. But, to be fair to the present administration, if Peter will be came into government, he will do the same thing. But some are saying he wouldn't procure the vehicles. Who said? Well, because there are systems and whatever. And you have to, are you not going to procure vehicles, operational vehicles? But do at, you think that the <laughs> senators, at this time, at the current me, situation. Do you think that the senators that came in, and there was a vast, you know, there was a vast uh, number of changes. No, I do mean. Do you think the, the senators that came in met vehicles down on the ground? But the government is supposed do to you be not know sensitive. That, do you not know that? the former senators that were, you know, allocated vehicles. Mr. K, the, the government is supposed away. to be awakened to the sensitivities <laughs> no, of Nigeria. I'm just telling you the reality. See, it is, it is, it is seemingly insensitive. We seem to be very, you know, we are very sentimental about this. And, of and course. you wouldn't blame Nigeria for Exactly, that, you would not blame I mean, Nigeria for being Nigerians, sentimental because... You understand. But through and through, they are, they are not going to this, benefit from some of this, 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 this procurement. this is the reality I'm telling you. Some of these senators, former senators that have left office now, left the office there, no furniture, nothing. They took it away with them. Mm. You understand? So the new senator coming in will have to refurnish his office. Now, talking about and accountability. you can't pick and choose. You get it? You can't say, oh, no, you are an old member. It, it will go round everybody. Okay, Mr. So okay. why are they not, and why is there no accountability for these people? Someone comes to office and you work and then you, you're going, you live with the furnitures that are not yours. Uh, and we keep blaming the past administration who doing was the, the same thing. Who the furniture and so allocated who, who, to? How did they manage office. to take the furniture I mean, out okay. of the National who Assembly the when allocated? they are sergeants at arms okay. at the National uh, Assembly who are supposed to right ensure now, who that were, these furniture don't find the their way out of the Assembly? assembly. To. If this former no, National listen, Assembly members listen, decide listen. to take okay. away this it's material. A system, oh, it's a system thing. You understand? Yes. They didn't allocate the furniture to the National Assembly to furnish the office of the senators. The money was allocated to the senators, to the House of Rep members, to furnish their offices. But so that right was 70 now, billion on this, You know, uh, yes. the, the Senate so came out to, to defend. <laughs> okay, the Senate came out <laughs> to defend uh, the SUV, saying that it is not like when you're living office, you're, you're supposed to, to uh, submit it back, to drop it back. But then, in case of this, since people can easily take furniture away, people can also take the SUV. I don't think Look, it is that easy. All this thing is double speak. There is a system. Now, you either buck the system, you mm. understand, or you flow with the system. Nigerian politicians are not brave enough to buck the system, so they flow with it. So now, 
the executive arm of government is also bringing, is also going to bring supplementary budget, is also going to bring approvals for his policies. You understand? Mm. So when he does, the National Assembly will also say, we need this also. So Fine. it's a continuous negotiation. It's a continuous negotiation. It's, it's, and this is all part of so fulfilling negotiation even agreements. People from the uh -huh. Labour so Party why do Nigerians now have to suffer this? Because, I mean, this is taxpayers' money going down the drain. The system of government, we have a presidential system, which is already expensive. Now, when we started this journey, the, 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 let, let me, let's go back to the return back to democracy. During Babangida's National Assembly, the National Assembly was not full-time. It was part-time. So that means that you guys will be in your houses pursuing your individual careers. And then when they call you to, they convene, to, the assembly. to convene, you will come to Abuja, um, you either lodge, you understand, for the period, you receive sitting allowances over that period. Now we have a National Assembly that is full-time. So that is where it is. So if you have a National Assembly that is full-time, you have to fund that National Assembly that is full-time. Now, all this comes out to change if you wanted you know, we're always talking about saving costs of government, bringing down the cost of government. But to go into bringing down the cost of government, it has to be those same lawmakers that are enjoying these perks that will put in a constitutional review that will change and trim down the cost of government. So the question is, if you are given that choice upon getting an suv <laughs> upon getting an SUV, <laughs> will you will you legislate okay. against yourself <laughs> mm. you understand so it goes beyond uh, it's a system there's a really sad system going it's on a sad there. system yes and what, All right. what, what 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 is needed to go forward is to overhaul the system. Mm. All right. So what All right. do All right. politicians uh, have the courage let's, to let's, do so? uh, let's take a pause on that. Let's talk, go back to the appeal court in Abuja. Uh, uh, Shafir Suleiman, of course, our reporter, is uh, there. Shafir, what is it looking like uh, there in the court? Right. We're right now in the uh, Court of Appeal, uh, where the... Uh, judgment for the panel that Mr. Castro is about to be delivered. Uh, it was uh, really a Herculean task getting here. Uh, we managed to get into the court from after being here again several uh, There's a huge crowd, you know, outside the court premises, uh, thousands of supporters, you know, wanting to get, get, make their way into the court premises and then subsequently into the courtroom. But there is a huge crowd that the courtroom cannot even contain. Uh, when we wanted to get there, and uh, you can see behind me at the background, you know, uh, both parties are seated. Uh, those from the you know, party that is the NNPC in China State, and of course, uh, the, those from the opposition, uh, I mean, uh, of progressive Congress are also here. Uh, you can see uh, legal practitioners are seated, quickly and quietly waiting for the arrival of the justices. Uh, to deliver this judgment. Uh, it was a very, very uh, calm atmosphere here in the court. But outside the courtroom, it was very calm. Uh, I've seen how, you know, people were in tear gas, you know, dignitaries falling apart, you know, with their Bavari girl falling and, and all of that. People being helped, you know, outside the tear gas, canisters were shot, and so on. And so it was a very hectic and you know, chaotic situation outside the court. All right, Shafiu, thank you so much for the update. However, um, you've given us an update and a filler of what's going on within the premises um, of the appeal court. What about outside? Uh, did you notice any activity upon arriving, you know, uh, to the appeal court? I'm talking about outside the surroundings of the appeal court. Were there any protesters? Were there any supporters? Were there any activities around it? Yeah, just like I said earlier, there are a number of supporters actually from both parties. Um, there, there is no, we, we didn't witness any uh, form of protest, uh, but then there's massive security buildup, you know, uh, getting close to even the court, uh, premises or around the 
vicinity or around the area of the port, you know, the entire, uh, as, I mean, uh, um, preempt zone is some, somewhat, you know, fortified. Uh, so you can't even get access to come in here if you don't have any business coming here. Uh, I think that, that's so, so far what I was able to see. Uh, we haven't seen any form of protest, but then the parties are here uh, and their supporters are outside. You could, uh, you know, identify them by their uh, mode of grace, you know, the red cars are there, the ones in black cars are there to, uh, you know, to share off their candidates and so on. Uh, but so far, uh, the, the justices are yet to arrive at court and we can see preparations getting up here. Any moment from now, they can come in uh, to deliver this judgment. Very, very, uh, I mean, uh, a judgment that is right. much awaited and, of course, has generated a lot of uh, interest. All right, thank you. Thank so you much. very much, uh, Phil Suleiman, for that update. We'll thank circle back to you subsequently to get more updates as the situation develops. Thank you so much. All right, uh, let's come back to the uh, studio. Uh, I, mean, I mean, earlier we were talking <laughs> about, about... You know, Kano even State. though he, we, we are grateful that this is happening in Abuja, not in Kano State, where we know the, the justices would have been scared because we saw some threats that were thrown here and there at the earliest when the tribunal made the judgment. Uh, so what do you think would happen in, in Kano? It depends on the outcome. Are you worried, the, Mr. Exactly. Kenji? Are you worried? <laughs> well, you know... Uh, Kano has always been, the, the, the level of uh, political awareness in Kano Extremely is high. very high. The stakes are also very high. Um, we've seen, um, which is not peculiar to Kano politics, uh, a relatively young party come and of, unseat the ruling party in the states. And then after that, we now have a situation in which the election of the governor is overturned. So there are supporters built on both sides. There's a lot of um, sentimental uh, value, mm. you know, in there. And, you know, anything can spark. Mm. Indeed. Well, I just we pray it doesn't it spark. Exactly. It doesn't. If it does, <laughs> we would unfortunately be seeing an explosion. Oh, but no, no, no. I think it's good not. to leave the conversation at this for of now. Course. Mr. Kendi Amudu, thank you so much for uh, gracing our call to be our newspaper reviewer this morning on the program. Thank I do you. hope to have you some other time. Thank you for having me.